again. The rival, the hero, the villain, and the champion all in one character. One may say that he is the best Pokemon character of all time. In fact, he's so great that I want to play Pokemon Black as him over Hilbert. Except we're not N, we're his brother, M. Yeah, I clickbaited you into this video. <laughs> For full on lie. We ain't playing as N, we're playing as M. I also clickbaited you into a giveaway, but more on that later. But we're not just playing as a brother, we're also playing Pokemon the way N would play. Unlike most other major characters in the series, N uses a completely different team after every major battle as he doesn't want his friends to be too burdened and injured. And the Pokemon that he uses in every battle are always Pokemon from nearby routes. He also limits how many Pokemon he uses starting off with one and slowly climbing his way up to a full team of six. And because of that, those are the exact rules that we're gonna follow. After every major battle, most notably the gym leaders, we will box our old party members and catch new ones on upcoming routes and use them instead. We're only allowed to use these new Pokemon until we have to switch them out. Old Pokemon cannot be used unless for HM purposes, and our party is also limited to the number of Pokemon N uses. I've also limited myself to having a level cap of either N, the next gym leader, or Elite Four members Ace, and to make it more fun, I will not be using items in battle except for held items. And while this challenge isn't a Nuzlocke, and thank god it isn't, or else I would have lost 20 different times by now. Well, we lost that one. We lost that one. The challenge of this run comes from the team selection. Picking the right team members with the limited amount of slots, routes, and level cap that you have, and finding the best way around a given battle. This challenge was also really fun because I got to use a lot of Pokemon that I otherwise would have never gotten to use. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started as M, N's long forgotten lost brother. We start our journey in Novemma Town, where Professor Juniper gives us and our friends Charon and Bianca our first ever Pokemon, and we decide to pick Snivy, which I named Pori, which is the name of the person who did all the internal work to replace all the sprites in the game for me. We essentially picked Snivy because it's a dope starter, and I wanted to use Panpour later on, so it worked out. We use Snivy to take down Charon's Tempeg and Bianca's Oshawa, and really show them that the blood of a king flows through our veins. After making a mess in our room, Charon and Bianca apologize to our adopted mother, but being the kind woman that she is, she says, it's no biggie. Bianca and Charon leave to Juniper's, but before that, Bianca has an argument with her father, reminding us of the argument that we have with our own father before running away from home. And we make our way to Professor Juniper's, who gives us a Pokedex and encourages us to catch as many Pokemon as possible so that we can learn all about them and become great friends with them. Sounds lovely. We traverse through Route 1 after Juniper's catching tutorial, but we don't catch any Pokemon for now. We make it to Accumula Town, where we see a bunch of IRL Dungeon and Dragon players named Team Plasma give some kind of protest to liberate our own Pokemon. And these Dungeon and Dragon players are led by none other than Getsis, our very own father. Ah, his Dungeon and Dragon addiction is what led him to neglect his kids and for us to run away in the first place. We're later confronted by our very own brother, N who doesn't seem to recognize us, which makes me fear that he's also fallen for the Dungeon and Dragon addiction. After all, he's talking all about this crazy stuff about how he can hear our Pokemon. We take on N in a battle and beat him pretty easy, and he mentions how he wants to free Pokemon from their Pokeballs, cause they're his friends. Well, since we're such a rebel, we're gonna do the opposite and can find Pokemon in their Pokeballs because they're our friends, dang it. We go back to Route 1 and catch Joseph the Petrat, and since we beat N for the first battle, we can catch Harry the Lillipop on Route 2. Did I forget to mention that our sprite artist Wooly actually match creates sprites of N over Hilbert for everything needed in the game? So when our mom gives us running shoes, we actually run like how N would, despite never seeing N run in these games. Or even when N picks up an item, it looks that way. So big shout out to Wooly and Pori for basically setting this game up for me. You guys are amazing. And the back sprite of N was made by JP Kex from DeviantArt. As we continue across Route 2, I got caught off guard by Bianca in a rival battle. With Joseph half alive, I thought the battle was gonna result in a loss, but luckily for us, Harry and Oshawa go into a battle of lowering each other's defenses, and when we're about to attack, Harry outspeeds and goes for an Oko tackle, giving us the win. We make it to Strife and City, and instead of going towards the Charon fight, I go ahead and pick up our Pampur, who are rightfully named Bully. Now you'll see going forward in the series that I typically only replace Pokemon after gym leader fights. But in the beginning of the game, I try to replace Pokemon after the first end fight and the second Bianca fight, basically fights that mark the checkpoint of an end of an area or beginning of a new area, and since the Bianca fight marked the end of Route 2, I go ahead and replace Joseph with Wooly, which makes the Charon fight much easier. Our fight against Triton City's Jim Chili is more like Crest vs Chili, 
as we're basically running the brothers team here. Something about brothers fighting brothers in this series, man. Chili's Lillipup goes crazy and goes for a ton of workups, but it acts dumb and doesn't attack and goes for bites instead of a stab move giving us the lead. We layer and tackle a bit more with Harry until Wooly can come in with a water gun and give us the win. Moving forward, I thought it was imperative that we catch Amuna and named it Yurita in the Dream Mirror as our encounter because where else would I get to use it? But I don't know, man. Maybe Muna wasn't the best idea. It did just conjure up an image of her father to command a bunch of Dungeon Dragon fanatics after all. I proceed along Route 3 and get surprised yet again with another rival battle. These things come like crazy in this game. Sharon has a level advantage, so it's a bit towards Sharon's favor but we still surprisingly make it out on top. After our battle, Dad's D&D friends get a bit too rowdy and go too far by stealing the little girl's Pokemon, so it's up to us and Charon to stop him. But not before we catch Epsilon the Blitzel. We also catch Earthbound the Rog and Rolla and add it to our team since N does have three Pokemon for the upcoming fight in Nacreen City. But this does mean we have to box Wooly going forward. We make it to Nacreen City and confront our brother N and it's confirmed that he's losing it. We take him on to try and snap him out of it, and luckily, we start this battle off with Epsilon, as that takes care of his pit of and temple. And finally, Yurta came out and dealt with N's timber rather easily. After the battle, N can't seem to get over the dragon part of D&D, cause he goes on fantasizing about becoming good friends with the legendary dragon of Unova, Zekrom. Oh boy, this can't be good. Since we just beat N, I decided that was a good time to replace my whole party with Pokemon outside of Pinball Forest. And I catch Bubble the Temple, Miscarrying the Timber, and Shiku the Sock, and replace our party before the gym fight once again. I live with Miscarrying against Lenora's Herdier, thinking that I would have the advantage, but the Intimidate drop gets me, along with her Leer, taking me out after I do half damage to her. I send out Bubble so that I don't have to take the Retaliate damage from the Watchhog. However, Bubble goes down to Herdier itself, leaving me to send a Shiku on her Herdier, who anyways heals up, basically making it so that it's a Shiku solo battle. Herdier immediately goes down to a double kick, and her Watchhog comes in, looking for a devastating retaliate. However, I go in for the low sweep, guaranteeing us to be faster next turn, and take her down with low sweep once again. That was a fun battle. But it's unfortunate that right after this battle, Dad's goons also go crazy about dragons and steal a dragon fossil from the Nacri Museum. We head along to stop them with Berg and Lenora, and I don't know what I was doing here, but I caught up a dove and named it Micah, and decided to try and solo Pinwheel Force with Justice Bird for some reason. But unfortunately, Pedov ain't it. Although it did lead us to our first ever evolution in the series, and got that stupid dragon skull back. We eventually end up catching a cottony named Bodovic after a viewer Monica Bodovic, but then for some reason, I decided to trade at Nacreen City for this pet lil. I don't know why this is such a good idea, but I do know I was getting tired of grinding in this area, so I probably just wanted the extra EXP. Sorry about that, Monica. At least it gives you a special shout out in this video, though. We also get a Venipede and name it after one of our members, which, by the way, you can become a member for just $1.99 today for a bunch of cool perks and emotes, or if not a member, why not just subscribe? It's free, and you just might make it into one of these videos. We take our team and marvel at Sky Arrow Bridge, where I now have the perfect location to admire a sprite and capture a good thumbnail image. We marvel some more at how good Gen 5 is and make our way to New York City. Eh, yeah, it's Castalia City. While we do pick up some items like a water stone and whatnot, we basically run straight ahead into the plot where some girl named Iris is helping Bianca because Father's Goon stole her Pokemon this time. These games are going too far, Dad. And as we confront him, we see that his illusions are going too far because even he's enamored with the idea of being a hero and finding some dragons and doesn't acknowledge our existence at all. I think someone here has a favorite child. Well, whatever, I don't care. I'm a runaway anyways, and we got Bianca's Pokemon back, so no biggie. We go and take on Berg with Great Leo's evolution, and I realize I don't have the best team for this battle, but it should be doable. Berg's Whirlipede comes out, and Tranquil takes care of it, no problem. But then Dwebble comes in, and despite it being a Bug-type, its Rock-type takes out both Micah and Grey Leo, so I switch into Lilial to Petlil to at least take advantage of the neutral effectiveness that Rock adds to Bug. Berg's Ace Levani then shows up, and to give Grey Leo some time in the battle as a Whirlipede, I let it take down Levani with Poison Tail, which is surprisingly pulled off all by itself. Guess I underestimated my team here. Now that we got our third gym badge, and since we have a fight with N in Nimbasa City where he uses four Pokemon, we're now allowed to catch a fourth member, but not before being stopped by Charon and Bianca. Bianca isn't too bad as Herdier goes down to Micah, and her Duwa and Mona go down to Liliel and Grey Liel respectively. Pansy caused a bit of a problem, but we take it down without any casualties. With Charon, he still for some reason has Pit of. I don't know why. And Pansage goes down pretty easy too. 
Pig Knight now gained the fighting type, so our flying type moves check for that. And look at that, a live part for our bug moves. This is a very convenient battle for our team. But it is time to say adios as we catch some new team members in the desert route. Flux the Sandal and Jared the Darmaka. Since the first half of the series was filmed in like June, I really don't remember what I was thinking, but I go straight to Nimbasa City after catching these two and start to enjoy riding our bike across the city with our hair going back and forth in the air. Woo! But then I go take our brother's invitation to ride the Ferris wheel together and we have a great bonding moment only for him to tell me that... Oh wait. What? Who? Who was that? Who's that? Yeah, I, I don't know who that is, but I assure you, M was on that Ferris wheel, and there our brother N tells us that it's not our father who is the leader of these clowns, it's him. He is the true dungeon master. As he finally reveals his true colors, he takes on a battle where again for some reason, I decided to go in with just two Pokemon. Two Pokemon that he also uses, and just get absolutely bodied and take our first loss. Yeah, see, it's a good thing this isn't a Nuzlocke. To be fair, I was recovering from COVID at this point in time, but I think from this point onwards, it's just a downhill run. But anyways, I go to the desert route and level up some more and catch Jeffrey the Scraggy and Ghost of the Yamask. And of course we get a fossil here, and of course I want Archon. So what do I do? Okay, give me the plume fossil. No, 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 no! <laughs> I get their two guys instead. Either way, it's not like we're gonna use them now, so it's all right. We go back and take on N once more, and his team is three-fourths the same as ours. The only difference here is that he has a Sigilyph while we have Ghost Star, but this time around, we learn from the previous battle and manage to take him out with three of our Pokemon left remaining. N then challenges me to stop his Dungeon and Dragons game, and to that, how could I say no? And to that, we make progress immediately by taking on Elisa. We start our battle with Flux and take on our Mulga with some Rock Tombs to get the Moxie boost as well as the speed drops on our Pokemon. We use the same strat to try and take out a second Emolga, but instead she uses Hyper Potions and takes out Flux with the Emolga, and sends out Substrika, allowing her to sweep our whole team. Yeah, like I said, that fight with our brother was the downfall of this run. I have never waited out in Pokemon Black and White till now, and here I am doing it twice in one day in the middle of the run. This time, I'm not in such a haste to stop our brother, and I challenge Elisa again, but this time after giving my team some items, and most notably the Quick Claw and Flux. And this time I get lucky and take out both Amolgus with Rock Tomb, and Flux gets a level up mid-battle, which is allowed. It then gets a Rock Tomb up and survives a hit from Substrika's Flame Charge with only 5 HP left, and gets the Quick Claw pop for a dig. But Substrika hits us with a Quick Attack instead. But have no fear, we disabled Substrika's Volt Switch with Ghost Star, sent out Jared, and took a Spark and hit it with Dig for the KO giving us our fourth badge. From here, it's now August when I stream again, so yes, it took me over a month to come back to this for some reason. And this time, I play off the principle that I will only catch one Pokemon per route. Don't know why I didn't play off this earlier, but oh well. Since we beat Elisa, we catch a new team, and this team starts off with Kusano the Lifeheart, who we couch on Route 16, and Nokia the Swadloon, who isn't as defensive as a Nokia, but hey, it's something useful for Clay at least. We go through the mandatory Pokemon musical thing and dress up with Kusano and immediately leave when we can. And then we'll see Bianca deal with the daddy issues, ones that I'm sure we'll have to deal with by the end of the game as well. We then proceed to Route 5 with our team of two, and I realize we have a big problem. We have a rival fight with Charon and only two Pokemon, both Pokemon being weak to Charon's Pig Knight. Yeah, sure, before I would have just cut some more Pokemon, but for some reason I'm now playing with the mindset that I can only catch one Pokemon per route, so I do this instead. Since I can only have 4 Pokemon and I've only caught 2 replacements, I decided to keep 2 Pokemon for my previous team and go ahead with them. For some reason I chose Flux and Jared, I think I should have picked Jeffrey and Ghost Star since I just recently caught them, but oh well, hindsight is 2020. Sharon's live part goes down to Nokia and then his tranquil roost spams and takes out Kusano so Flux comes in for the kill. Jared takes out Pantage no problem, Flux comes back once more to take out his Pig Knight and goes through an evolution. An evolution that this time we 100% box for good. Someone remind me to write my own rules down somewhere for the next challenge run that I do. Upon being Sharon, we meet Alder the champion who makes us battle some preschoolers and then tells us some stuff about being happy with Pokemon right after making us beat 3 year olds. Yeah, I don't know about that one chief. We explore Route 5 and catch my favorite human Pokemon and the secondary mascot of this channel, Minchino, who we name after Cosmic, a friend and a moderator of the Champion League podcast, which you should definitely check out our podcast, by the way. Upon crossing the Great Charizard Bridge, I, uh, I, I mean the Driftwell Bridge, we catch ourselves Justin, the Ducklet, a Pokemon that I never thought I would use, but one that I was pretty happy to have myself use this time around. We arrived in Driftville and immediately headed down towards the Cold Storage, where more of Dad's D&D henchmen are running around. 
One of the more hardcore guys was there, but he basically tried to sit back and watch the game unfold. But I just swept the floor with Cosmic and her tail slap, as the Mancino should, and made him and all his henchmen run back home. Clay recognizes us after this and lets us challenge his gym, and that we will. But only after breaking Charles' heart first and making Nokia happy enough to evolve into Levani. We reach Clay, and the battle starts with Justin vs. Krokrok. He puts us through Swagger and Torment as a complete annoyance and almost takes us out, but we get a critical hit Scald with our first move and manage to take out his Krokrok. Excadrill comes out next and immediately takes out Justin and takes out Cosmic pretty easily as well. Even with the Torment from our end, Excadrill manages to take out Kasano. Because of the Protect, we manage to Protect on the Rock Slide and I think we manage to have it in the bag, but then I Protect on a turn where he uses a Hyper Potion and basically fumble the rest of the match, losing once again. We take him on again with Justin taking out Crocodile once more, but also wasting a Hyper Potion in the process. Kusano comes out on taking Excadrill for some fake out damage and a Torment, which is the move that sets us up for the win. This time I play it smart and go into Cosmic and go for the most cheese win ever. Am I faster than you? <gasps> oh! Whoa! Oh, oh, oh! Whoa! <laughs> oh no! Yep, I tormented an encore in such a way where Clay's Excadrill could only use Home Claws every other turn and have to struggle all the other turns. And it worked out pretty well. Then for Spopletoad, all Nokia had to do was use Razor Leaf, and the fifth badge was ours. We try to make our way to Route 6, but not before Bianca stops us for a battle. It's hailing near Driftful since we're in the winter season in the game, so Herdia's crit on the takedown along with Hail just takes Justin out. But I send in Cosmic to outspeed and go for a tail slap. Then I send in Nokia against Duwat, and Cosmic takes out Pantsir with a few digs. Finally, Kusana comes in, and Mushana is taken care of. We go back outside the cold storage and catch our first new team member, that being Micah the Vanilla Light, who, by the way, shame on you, Micah, for taking advantage of my poor memory and taking a second nickname. Karma's gonna get you in this run. I also run back all the way to Nakamu City to reluctantly revive our accidentally covered fossil for a Tortuga, who we named Mask after everyone's favorite Twitter memer in the community. I also fetch for Route 6's rare encounter, Emolga, who we named after my friend and the first member of the channel, Amulia. Clay then helps us get into Chartstone Cave, and immediately as we enter, we're greeted by N and some of his new party members, who call themselves the Shadow Triad. We're supposedly chosen as a part of this game that he's playing, and that our father gets us specifically is out to gauge how good of a player we are. Yeah, I. We talk with Juniper and Bianca a bit, and then catch our 14 member of this part of the run, Sayaka the Drillbur. So at this point in the game, I try and grind for levels as I've always been, but I start to run so low on time IRL, and this run has been going on since June, and just hasn't been completed due to the amount of grinding time, and since it's just grinding, I thought why even bother, there's not really any skill to it anyways, and plopped a bunch of rare candies. Now, it's not an auto win since I still have to beat some mandatory trainers and keep my Pogon below the next gym leader's ace, which in this case for Skyla, it's 35. So I will get capped off, but yes, it does make my time with this run significantly easier. We get the Sayaka to evolve into the all-powerful Excadrill and make our way to the end of Chartstone Cave, where our brother N has three of his craziest D&D players almost kidnap us and take us to him. Ray goes on about how his goal of this game is to separate people and Pokemon and make the world black and white and go straight in to fight us. Ends boulder is pretty easy to take down with Sayaka, Jeltuk is no problem with Amulia, Mass was able to dig away the clink for the KO, and Micah freezes Ends Pharisee to death. Yeah, I'll keep my Pokemon with me, N. Thank you. Bianca and Juniper later come back, and Juniper drops the biggest troop bomb that all of Twitter should have heard, and N seems to be someone who enjoys going on Twitter, because he despises her words and runs off. We meet Juniper's father, Cedric, in Mr. Alton City, along with Skyla, the city's gym leader, and the number one clickbait icon. And of course, she gives us a little tease before our gym battle, making us climb Celestial Tower and ring the bell before going on to fight her. We make our way back to our gym, and I use the Rare level my Pokemon before I fight her, and of course, I accidentally overleveled Micah, who's now evolved. Perfect. Oh no! <laughs> but because it's overleveled, I can't use it anymore. Told you Karma was gonna get you, Micah, but honestly, that's okay because Skyla has to be one of the easiest gym leaders in history. I literally use Amulia and just Electro Ball everything that comes my way and take out all three of her Pokemon. Don't know why she didn't use an Amogla herself, but hey, that's Skyla. Outside of the gym, our brother creepily waits for us and acknowledges that while we may have a strong bond with her Pokemon, eh, we still gotta go and talks about the dragons once more. 
We brush it aside and continue with our gym challenge. And of course, it's time to rotate Pokemon once again. I catch Quinderdealing, who evolves into the best form of Sazbuck, and Dream Axo the Litwick. Now I keep Masp and Mike on the team for now because I don't have replacements for them and take on Charon once again. Dream Axe is unable to take care of things right now and goes down to Unpheasant, but Micah comes in for a revenge kill. Mass Wall was a bit of a struggle, takes down Big Knight with its combination of Water Rock moves. Semi Sage somehow comes in and takes out Micah with the Seed Bomb, but Quinn comes back for Justice and also takes out his Life Heart with a Jump Kick. Alda then comes from out of nowhere and makes Charon question his whole life purpose, and it seems to be doing the guys some good. And since Alda gave us Surf, we can actually go back and catch Crispy the Axew in Mr. Alton Cave as well as hear some sweet, sweet battle music as we catch our first ever legendary in this run, Cobalion. Yeah, I'm running out of routes to catch Pokemon in, okay? We don't use Pot the Cobalion just yet, but we do run back to Twist Mountain and catch ourselves Devon, the Cryogonal. And after getting through the Twist Mountain and arriving in Icarus City, I realized something. N only has six Pokemon from this point moving forward, meaning technically I can use five Pokemon. And technically, while Dermanta in the desert is Species Claws, it is a static encounter, right? So, I mean, yeah, it's on the team, duh. We named it Kawari, and let me tell you, I'm glad I caught this thing, because right after this, we go ahead and fight Bryson. A bit under level 2, but Dream Axel and Kawari together just sweep this whole gym like it's nothing. Just like eating ice cream on a nice hot summer day, bro. But yeah, we leave the gym, and all of a sudden, Bryson has to save us, Taryn, and Bianca, from those three crazy Dungeon and Dragon players from earlier, but they tell us to go north to Dragon Spiral Tower, and one can only wonder why that is. Unfortunately, our time with this team is short-lived because it's time to swap them out one by one. But though I catch some Pokemon here, I still use this team for the remainder of Dragon Spiral Tower. We first catch Yusin the Mianfu and Anthony the Dredagon, and we claim all the way up Dragon Spiral Tower, only to see that... <gasps> Gasp! Dragons are real! Well, legendary ones anyways. Okay, so... As much as we don't want to play this game of Dungeons and Dragons, and has kind of played our hand and forced us to get involved with it. But the only reason why we're doing it is so that we can snap out of this madness and our father's ways. We start to make the swaps in our party as we make our way to the desert resort, but we catch Drip the Stun Fist before that. And when we get to both the ruins, Getsus kind of just tells us that, yeah, we suck. Yeah, I. I bet we won't suck all so much after you see us catch Yippers, the Verizion. We can't find the legendary dragon anywhere, but it turns out that Lenora just had it with her in the museum the whole time. Bearing the responsibility of keeping the other dormant legendary dragon with us, we make our way to Opelousa City to talk to the two dragon experts there, Drayden and... Oh, oh god, it's Iris. To discover how we can get the legendary dragon to reawaken, and it seems the ways to just beat the Leap Four. So yeah, exactly what we've been trying to do this whole time. Oh yeah, and we fought Bianca before this too, but I put Paul on this team, so you know how this battle flew by pretty quickly. And I also got Jade West the Gotharita, who actually evolves in the Gothel during the gym. Drayden is the gym leader here and leaves out with his fracture, which Jade West swiftly takes out with a double psychic. Believe it or not, Pot actually goes down to a Dredagon because of a combination of Revenge, Heal Stall, and Rough Skin, which is pretty smart on Drayden's part. But we bring out our own Anthony and take out his Dredagon, only for his Haxorus to take us out and go down to the Rough Skin himself. Yep, seems like some real poetic irony here. With their final badge in hand, we make our way to Victory Road, but not before replacing our team for the second last time with a bunch of encounters that we missed now that we have Surf. For one, we don't even have a surfing or fishing encounter, so we use that and catch Alex the Frillish. We also catch Xavier the Dwebble and slap on Yepers to our team as well. For some late game Pokemon, we catch Shrewd the Buffalon for now, but we still have two more Pokemon to catch before the climax of the game. As we approach Victory Road, Charon challenges us to one final fight in this run, and he takes us out the first time. Yeah, not a good look, but maybe not the best of teams that I have set up, but I'm sure it's gonna get better. The second time around, Xavier dies to a bunch of hacks, Shrewd comes to save the day, Alex takes out Ember with Curse Body Surf, Yepers really isn't able to do much despite being a legendary, so Shrewd takes care of both Semi Sage and Lipart as well. Something tells me that I messed up the team selection here, but oh well, we can only move forward. So I move ahead to Victory Road and go through the coolest bad check in all of Pokemon history and look for a last non-static encounter in the game. And we essentially have a choice between Heatmore and Durant. And of course, I picked Gamer557, the Heatmore, to wrap up our Firewater Grass Core. Because that's all we need to win the league, right? 
Uh, anyways, we have to catch the last of the Swords of Justice, Terrakion. We do and name it Gaming after Poke Gaming, but we don't use him just yet, because for the lead 4, we only end up taking a team of 5. Unova's lead 4 is by far one of the coolest and fiercest of all time, but if we're the legendary hero we're meant to be, there's no way we can lose. I lost to every single one of them before I could even beat one of them! Breaking the fourth wall for a second, this is probably the most embarrassing thing that's happened to me in my Pokemon career. I don't even remember losing the lead four in black and white, and sure, one or two losses in general ain't that bad, but I lost like all of them! And some of them multiple times! I don't know how this happened! Yeah, it's my fault, and I could have played better, but I didn't think I needed proper strategy to ever beat a regular lineup of Elite Four members. The biggest mistake here was picking Heatmore over Durant. Durant would have been very useful with two or three members of Elite Four, whereas Heatmore was pretty much completely useless, especially with the lack of moves that it had. But regardless, that's what makes this run this run. But if we have to save N from the treacherous of her father, Getsus, we have no choice. We have to proceed forward. We start off with Grimsley and use Yepers to set up with Workup and take out Grimsley's lead Scrafty. Unfortunately, Lyport comes in and I have to switch on the Shriroop and take it out with the Megahorn. For Crocodile, even after a Shell Smash, it outspeaks Xavier, so I come in with Alex and waste Grimsley's full restores by spamming Surf. Bishop comes out and takes out most of our team, but Yepers is able to outspeed and take the W. That took way too long. For Marshall, we start the match off with Gamer and will -O throw intentionally get taken out and start to work up with Yepers and Giga Train the throw for the knockout and try to do the same thing with the Conkelder but it lives and takes me out with the hammer arm. Alex comes out and is able to take it out with the Surf. For Sock, Shriop kept going for head charges to stall out the full restores and takes itself out but Xavier is able to come in with a quick claw pop and take the W on Sock. We have just me and Shu left and Alex is able to come in again just Surf spam and voila, two of the four Elite Four members done. We're starting to get the hang of things. Next up is Caitlyn, and Xavier gets the rocks up as well as an Exus or Reuniclus before going down. Shroop head charges the Reuniclus as well as the incoming Sigilyph, but Caitlyn is able to heal up Sigilyph and take us out in the process. Alex tanks the Shadow Ball and dishes a few right back out to take it out. Alex tanks another Thunderbolt from Gothitel and talks with the Gothitel for residual damage, and despite the type disadvantage, I send the Yepers to keep Giga Drain the Gothitel, which takes it out. I keep Giga Draining under Musharna and manage to get a crit, which saves us and gives us the win. Crit definitely mattered. One last lead four member, Chantel. We start off the battle with Xavier setting up the rocks again for the extra damage and do a bit of chip damage with Rock Slide before going down to Kafagrigus. We send Yepers out and work up Giga Drain to take out the Kafagrigus and switch into Alex on the Chandelure. Alex does manage to style out the heals, but goes down to a Shadow Ball. Shroop comes in for the revenge kill with Bulldoze and we bring in Yepers once again and start to Giga Train spam the Golurk, taking it down while we get subdued to Curse. But since Jellicent is our last Pokemon, we can heal up with Giga Train and take out our final Pokemon with ease. Oh, and also? Yeah, I have no idea why I lost the lead for like 12 times before this, but oh well, it is what it is. Now that we beat the lead four, we go on to face the champion, Alder, only to find out that our brother N has taken his Dungeon and Dragon dream to a whole new level. By thrashing Alder and overpowering him, he brings upon a whole new dungeon that takes over the league, N's castle. Yeah, he ain't pulling any punches today. Alder and Sharon ask us to take on our brother and thwart his plans, however, six of N's Dungeon and Dragon players all stand before us and try to stop us. But little do they know that we got people playing this game on our side as well. The gym leaders appear and stop the sages from harming us in probably the coolest scene of all the gym leaders between any Pokemon game, allowing us to advance and prepare for the battle against N. However, since we use our current team for the Elite Four, I decided since we have the opportunity to switch up Pokemon, that we should for the final battle against N. But with what Pokemon? Besides Terrakion, we've exhausted all of our encounters, so who will we use? Well, I decided to head back and create our all-star team of Pokemon that we used previously and get them leveled up and ready for this final fight. Poor being the one to set up this game for us means that Superior has to be on the team, and same with Semipur as Wooly was the one to set up the sprite art for us. Cosmic is a beloved channel member and a moderator, and Minchino is one of my favorite Pokemon, so of course we're gonna have to go with Chinchino. Flux puts in a crazy amount of work, and it being a Crocodile with Moxie means that it's gonna go crazy for this final battle. 
And of course, we have the newly caught gaming, the Tarakion, as the final member of the Swords of Justice. And as we approach end of this final battle, he brings out his legendary dragon to show off his power as the Dungeon Master. And we encounter the final Pokemon that will join our team to end this once and for all. Our lightstone begins to glow, and we begin to fight Reshiram, the Dragon of Truth. And... Ooh, I was gonna do, okay. WHAT?! Yeah, I thought I lost my very own dragon in this game, but luckily this is a mandatory capture and so we catch Delta the Reshram as the final member and our very own legendary dragon in the finale. Where he tries to use his ideals to make his Dungeon and Dragon game a reality and where we try and slap him with the truth, the cold hard reality that this game isn't even real. We both start off with our legendary dragons and he has the advantage in terms of levels, but luckily because of Fusion Flare's effect and Fusion Bolt hitting us first, we are able to do more damage to End and Zekrom than they are able to do to us, taking out his biggest threat. He then sends a Karakosta, who we send a Pori and start to coil up for the rest of the team, and Giga Drain to recover to take out Karakosta. But because he sends up Vandalux next, Pori's setup was rendered useless, so I go out into Gaming, Sword Dance and Sacred Sword instead, because he sends a Kling Clang next and we take it out with a single Sacred Sword. JK with Zorak, but Kling Kling really does come out next, and we take it out with the Sacred Sword as well. Finally, Archie comes out, and Wooly lives on 4 HP, and uses Waterfall. Archie Ops then goes for a devastating Stone Edge, but luckily, Wooly is a legend and it avoids the attack, letting it take out Archie Ops with another Waterfall, giving us the win against our brother, and finally putting a stop to this little game that he's been playing. Realizing the errors of his ways, our brother N reflects and mourns the cost of his actions. Meanwhile, our father Getsis comes out and admits that he was the one pulling the strings the whole time. See, I told you not to listen to him, N. He brainwashed you. His addiction got the better of him, and it got the better of you too. And while I was able to save you, I don't know whether I'll be able to save him or not. But you'll be damn sure that at the very least, that I'm gonna try and stop him. He starts off with Kofagrigus, and we use Delta and just Fusion Flare twice for the knockout. Bufalon comes up next and we go ahead and go to gaming for a double sacred sword. Bufalon does EQ to us for a massive damage, but we're able to get off the second sacred sword and take it out. Getsus then brings out his ace, and though it's weak to Terrakion, it sees that it can get the knockout by outspeeding. And it does. I bring up Pori and immediately get Fire Blast into Oblivion, leading me to bring out Cosmic the Chinchino. Now, a lot of you are probably thinking, what's this little thing gonna do to Hydreigon? But with a bit of luck and a technician's tail slap, we can do some serious damage. However, we unfortunately take a focus blast of the face and go down there. You missed! You hit! There's no way! We're about to lose. We're about to lose. Oh well. Our father gets us officially has the lead on us and his Hydreigon is still in green health and has taken out three of our Pokemon. We're struggling, but we haven't given up just yet. We send out Flux the Crocodile, and the only way to victory that I see now is a Moxie Sweep. Hydreigon goes for a Focus Blast and it misses, but Brick Break isn't enough to take it out. Gets its heals up as Hydreigon and we do some damage on it, and then it proceeds to miss the next two Focus Blasts, letting Flux get off the Brick Break and taking out our father's ace Pokemon, giving us the Moxie Boost. Things are suddenly looking good again, but then Getsus wants to bring Seismitoad, and I'm like, I can't really use Flux for that. So I bring out Wooly first, Waterfall a bit, get knocked out, then bring in Crocodile, and then go for the knockout, and get the Moxie boost again. Getsus then sends out Bisharp, and we get a plus one Brick Break off for the kill. And finally, Getsus brings out his final Pokemon, Electros, which in a stroke of luck, we get a plus two Rock Slide flinch off on, letting us attack one final time. Taking it out, and giving us the final W in this challenge against our father, Getsus. Getsis was far beyond insanity, irrecoverable. All we could really do for him was give him a life behind bars. But our brother N had realized something. He had saw the light. He had confronted us brother to brother and seen the ways of people, seen how reality is better than living in imagination. He had seen all the great people of this world and was truly touched by them, leading him to reform his dreams and values. N, our brother, while well, you may fly off into the distance today, because truth be told, I don't know anything about Dungeons and Dragons! Yo, we finally did it! It wasn't that big of a 
challenge. But finally, I can make a video on it, <laughs> which I'm going to. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Hey, you remember that giveaway I talked about earlier? Well, two of you will get a copy of either Pokemon Scarlet or Violet, or any Nintendo Switch game of an equivalent price. All you gotta do is comment down below your favorite Pokemon and their nickname for this run. But don't tell me that you're your favorite. Use their nickname in a comment in a way where people who haven't made it in the video won't know that that's the condition for the giveaway. Like something like, I love that when this Pokemon did this in this run. Something like that. It doesn't have to be. You don't have to use the word favorite. Whatever. Make it creative. But anything that doesn't give it away, that will be a comment entered into the giveaway. And I'll pick a winner for our next challenge video next week. See you then.